Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Dave Roth with the Testing Company. Uh, please hold on for a few minutes as we let others join, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we will go ahead and get started this morning. I, I want to uh, again say thank you for the invitation to share some information today. My name uh, is Jason, and I'm located in uh, northern Ohio, so I think uh, climate-wise we're probably very similar to, to what uh, you'll be facing in, in your area of the country. And today I, I just want to share, you know, overall some white grub management. Uh, We'll, we'll dig into a arena insecticide and how that material can be used for uh, controlling white grub issues that you may be facing. Um, as I said, I'm in charge of um, all the technical services as well as the research and development uh, segment at, at New Farm. And uh, arena for myself, just to back up and say a little bit of a history, you know, um, started working with this compound when it was a numbered compound and really have had to, an opportunity to work with it for, for over 15 years now. So a great chemistry um, that's been used a, a lot in the industry today. And, and really what I wanted to share with you is kind of an outline is we'll talk a little bit about the characteristics of arena, kind of what makes it unique, uh, kind of talk a little bit about the limitations. I think that's always important to know exactly how a material works and what you can and can't do with it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about white grubs themselves. I'm sure some of you probably face issues like I do where you have moles and other um, digging insects potentially in your lawn if there's some, some beetle activity there. Uh, how do you stop that? And, and we'll kind of touch a little bit on that as, as well today as well as you know kind of finishing with what I would consider some of the best uses for arena and, and exactly how you might want to uh, consider using this material to, to best manage your annual uh, white grub problems that you might be facing. I'll just start by saying that overall with arena insecticide, <clears throat> you know, we do have two formulations. We have both a granule formulation as well as a sprayable formulation. So we, regardless of, of which, which one you would prefer, uh, there certainly is an option with arena. Um, I'll just say right up front that overall, if you match up our use rates, um, AI per AI basis, uh, through the years of research that we've looked at both the granule as well as the sprayable formulations, we found almost identical control, which is, which is rather unique in itself. A lot of times you'll find a little bit better control with a spray because you can get better coverage. But with ARENA, even the granular formulation, we've had really consistent results throughout the years. And, and you can see that overall, um, the use rates do have a, a wide range with both of these formulations. And we'll kind of cover that here in, in a few moments. 
But really the, the rate for both the granule as well as the spray will depend on the time of, of application that you'll be making uh, with Arena. Um, I do want to just real quickly here cover a couple of things on the label that you'll find with Arena and it's always good to just kind of spell these out right up front before using any material is, is that with both the granule as well as the spray formulations they are caution signal words. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, personal protective equipment that uh, is required. Nothing unusual here. I think these are all practices that you should be uh, partaking as far as if you're applying pesticides, you know, long sleeve shirt, uh, long pants, socks and shoes, as well as some gloves. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, I will mention though that you can only make uh, applications up to 0.5 uh, pounds active ingredient per acre per season. Uh, I'll mention that because if you're at the maximum use rate, um, with either of the formulations, a single application then one is really where you would be limited to. So you can make multiple applications if you're at the low rates, uh, but if you're at the high rate, just a single application per year. And, and we'll show that, but uh, overall you can get very good control, especially at those high rates uh, with just a single application per year. Uh, the re-entry interval then, it is when uh, sprays or dusts have settled. Um, if you happen to be in a non-ag setting, so um, if you're in a, uh, sod farm or something that falls under the agriculture setting, it is 12 hour re-entry. Um, something that makes Arena though very unique is the last point where we're talking about no watering is required by label. Um, it's rather unusual chemistry, especially for something that has activity on white grubs to, to have an insecticide that's not highly susceptible to break down by UV light. Many of the insecticides you'll find are broken down by light, so when the, once they're exposed to sunlight, um, you know, rather quickly they start to lose efficacy. Uh, with Arena, we found that through the years, it's not nearly as critical. So that's where a lot of people uh, will make applications, just use natural rainfall, if that might be a day or two after an application or a week or so after the application. Uh, the material is very stable and uh, you don't have to worry about it or is no sort of label violation if, if it's not immediately watered after that application. Some of the uh, characteristics though, again, that, that make Arena really is a, a unique uh, compound for, for trying to manage your grubs. Um, there's really three things that, that pop out to me that are very important when you're looking at insecticides or comparing insecticides uh, for control of white grubs. You're talking about, again, a pest that's down in the soil. So to me, the three characteristics that really you need to take into consideration are first, the, the water solubility. So you need a material that certainly can get in through that, sat, that uh, thatch layer um, down into the soil to where these grubs would be feeding and having activity. So you need to pay attention, you know, certainly to your water solubility. The second characteristic then is something that we call our KOC or octanol water coefficient. Really what this is a value of is really how, how, bitely, how tightly bound um, or sort of the attraction that various compounds will have towards organic material. If you have organic materials that are that are in your soil and with a very high KOC value overall your compound will will attract and not release and we'll kind of walk through that what that really means but certainly when you're applying an insecticide again it's got to move through that thatch layer if it has a very high KOC value that means it's going to bind very tightly to that organic matter and not really be a, val a value to try to control our insects so you have to watch that value as well as how long it lasts, right? How, how much time will this material be active once you apply it in the soil? If it breaks down real quickly, if it only has a soil half-life of a couple of days, we're gonna have to make sure that we get in contact with our grubs right away, or is it a material that we can apply it kind of ahead of time, it's still gonna be lasting in that soil. So to me, those three characteristics are all very important when we look at trying to, to manage our grub populations. Um, Again, a couple of them that really start to stand out when you put this all together is solubility along with your KOC. Again, kind of remember where our white grubs are feeding. They're near the soil, but you know, at this point in time, soil temperatures are quite low. They're gonna overwinter as a third instar, so a rather large grub. They're down deep in the soil right now, and then they'll be moving upward, um, you know, throughout this spring and then you know, coming out and emerging as, as adults here in the summertime. So it's really important and it impacts the movement of the soil uh, when you know that solubility as, long as, as well as the KOC, kind of combining how water soluble or how much it moves in the water or with water along with how 
tightly it's bound to that organic matter and that's you know impacts not only the movement getting to the soil but also the movement in the plants uh, if you think about it you you really want this material to be in the roots and have some systemic movement as well to to move throughout that root to where if a, a white grub is feeding on that root uh, you'll have activity and be able to control and kill that uh, white grub as well and also, you know, like it says, uh, we, we do need to get into the soil under the root zone to really to control our white grubs. That's what we're really always talking about or, or need to be thinking about when it comes to white grub management. If you look at the solubility comparison of some of the insecticides that are out there and you take a look at Arena, what I'll say right here is we're really looking at um, a part per million basis of 327 part per million for Arena. What does that really mean in, in the big scheme of things? It's not highly water soluble. It's also not a material that's really what I'd call water insoluble. I, I really like arena because that's kind of where you would like to see something. You don't want something that's so water insoluble that when you apply it on the surface that it doesn't move through that thatch layer. It needs to move through that thatch layer, but then you also don't want it to continue to quickly move through the soil profile. So it has some water solubility, but, but overall not highly water soluble just about perfect. And with arena, as far as the persistence in, in soil, if you take a look at, again, some, some of the various insecticides that are out there, the big thing here is if you, if you really focus on the number of days, how long will arena be active in the soil? You can see the value that we have in, in half-life is 148 days. So, you know, so we're talking months after the application that you still have activity in the soil that would be at a level that could show activity or control of some of these white grubs that would be in that soil. So again, a material that you can apply, it'll last for several months after that application as well. And then the last one here is our soil binding. Really, again, I've kind of mentioned this, but if you have a very high KOC value for one of your insecticides, what that really means is it binds very tightly to organic matter. And probably the best example of that is imidacloprid. A lot of different trade names, but we're showing Merit here on this particular slide. But again, Merit has a very high KOC value. So one of the things with Merit, you do have to be very cautious of, and you probably might be aware of this, but you know, Merit isn't a material that you would apply over the top of mulch, for instance. Mulch has a material that is a basis, is a very high organic matter. And you'll find that a metacloper gets bound into that um, mulch and doesn't have an opportunity then really to do a very effective job in controlling our, our insects. Um, Arena, again, it has a KOC value of around 150. Um, what does that really mean? Overall, it can move its way slowly through some of this organic material. So it might uh, bind or attach for a little bit, but with a little bit more rainfall or some irrigation, it'll kind of move on past that re-release and move down to where it needs to in the, in the target zone really kind of that interface of the thatch and the soil where these uh, white grubs would be most actively feeding throughout the, the, the late um, summer um, and, and early fall timing. You know, when you take a look at white grubs in, in turf, it, it, it is kind of nice because it is a one generation per year pest. So it does make it overall in the big scheme of, of insects that you're trying to control a little easier than insects that may have multiple generations per year to where you have adults mixed in with, you know, immature stages. Um, you know, with white grubs, yeah, there's, there's some overlap within some of these, but overall you're gonna find this uh, kind of once a year generation where they'll overwinter and mature as larvae and then pupate and the uh, adults will lay eggs in, in the summer and then kind of really restart this whole system over again. Um, so, you know, right now we're at these kind of rather large um, instars that would be fairly deep in the soil, you know, protecting themselves from winter conditions, and they'll come up and start feeding uh, here real shortly. So when you're looking at the control of white grubs with arena or other insecticides, you really well, in particular with, with arena, um, it does need to either come in contact or be ingested. So it does have activity in both directions where if it just happens to come in contact with the soil or uh, gets ingested through a root that's been treated and the materials in there, um, it can certainly have an effect on these grubs and eventually kill them if the concentration is to a, a toxic level. So when we look at the applications, we really consider them one of two ways. Uh, we can either have preventive applications uh, with arena or it's unusual to where it's an insecticide 
that you can also use in a curative approach. So that preventive application would be something primarily that would be focused on prior to egg laying. And egg laying, if you're not familiar with white grubs, is going to occur in the middle of summer. And when those eggs really hatch, that's when is absolutely most sensitive to an insecticide like arena. Uh, with curative applications, you know, these are later in the season, primarily after those eggs have started to, to move to the next phase into the first instar, second instar, you know, so we're getting larger size grubs. You start to see some damage on turf. This is often time where people, you know, realize, hey, I have a grub issue, you know, in response to turf damage, or you may have some digging from skunks or raccoons or other uh, rodents that might be in your lawn digging and going after some of these grubs that now I need to make an application and this would be a curative application of arena to where you can use the same material um, to actually shut down and, and sort of kill these uh, grubs that would already be present. But do remember that when you're taking a look at preventive applications, if you're making these before these eggs are hatched or right when these eggs hatch, it doesn't take much insecticide at all. So you can really kind of use a lower rate at that point in time um, and control the white grubs versus curative applications. You're talking a, a larger, um, a larger um, uh, immature stage of the white grub uh, that also uh, would require a higher use rate to be able to control that. There's just a lot more mass there. And remember that toxicity overall is a function of, of dose of, of how much mass there is with that um, insect at the time of application. So again, larger second, third star instars will, will take a higher rate or higher exposure to the insecticide to control than something that's very small uh, in stature. So some different uh, timings that you can use with arena and still get you know exceptional control really depending on what you're looking at. And I've kind of put together this overall calendar of Japanese uh, beetle biology, and, and I'll kind of start out here with the shaded and green area called the spring, spring preventive applications. Again, you know, we have a half-life with arena, again, as a granule, as a spray, is something that you could go out with in, in April, late April or May. A lot of times I see people making applications in May, really before we see much activity where the, before they've even pupated into the next generation, those third instars at this point in time. You make an application in May, and that's really going to carry you uh, throughout the season. Um, you can kind of move into something that's more popular, I would say, overall, is waiting till June or July. You're making these applications, again, as a, a summer preventive. So these would be for some of the eggs could start to hatch, but really before first instars are, are there in, in showing um, showing any sort of activity as far as uh, damage to the turf. So you're making these applications, again, in June and July, you can get the rate down at that point in time, because again, what you're targeting are, are eggs and very early first instars that may have just hatched. So again, there's not much there as far as the insect being able to tolerate an exposure to the uh, insecticide. And, and you can uh, very effectively uh, control these with a, with a June or July application of, of arena. And then curative applications, more August, September, October, to where you're certainly gonna have first instar and a lot of times second, and maybe even moving into third instar uh, grubs at that point in time. So larger grubs uh, looking at, at curative applications. So again, kind of broke, broken this up in three different timings. And just a, a chart that I'll show uh, looking at overall the data and really my expectations and things that we've really kind of found throughout the years. And here we're just looking at a, untreated versus arena and, and merit. And the first thing I, I'd like to point out is, you know, these are overall combined over several years and it, again, applications in, in May. Um, with arena here, we're looking at 6.4 ounces of the, uh, of the 50 WDG, so our sprayable formulation. Again, we've seen very similar results with the granular, but you make an application in May, um, you can see here, the control is, is nearly 100%. So these spring preventive applications, again, a material that can last for a couple of months, so um, can be a very effective way to, to really use arena uh, to control white grubs. Moving into kind of that summer preventive timing, um, if you take a look here, again, very 
consistent results to what we just looked at. Uh, again, nearly 100% control, but you'll find that your arena rate actually went down. Again, we're tr in this particular case, we're making those applications before our instars have developed. So really kind of right when egg laying is, has occurred and eggs are gonna start to hatch. So that's really kind of where you're, you're targeting here. So it doesn't take a lot of arena to have very effective control. But you compare that even to our fall curative control, um, these would be applications applied in October. And this is just comparing arena relative to Dialox, which a lot of people will use Dialox for a fall curative application in a celeprin. You can see the celeprin in the fall really has no activity on, on third instar grubs. Um, it's truly a preventive uh, insecticide. Now Dialox, kind of the other hand, it only lasts in the soil for a couple of days, but it can have activity on uh, curative activity if the grubs are there and present at the time of application. But with arena, the one thing I'll, I'll let you know that in this particular case, we're looking at the maximum use rate and we're still only obtaining around 75% control uh, with a fall curative application. So, you know, that's one thing it's important to kind of remember when you're looking at, at controlling grubs. So it gets late in that year, you're seeing some feeding from raccoons or other, ins other uh, pests that might be tearing up your lawn. Um, that there are materials like Dialox Arena that have curative activity, but keep in mind, you do need to go at a high rate at that point in time, you know, and don't expect 100% control. Say you may have right now, uh, when you go out there and you kind of monitor it, you may have 10 grubs in a square foot. You decide, oh, I need to make an arena application. I have grubs there. Um, again, about the highest expectation I would say is somewhere around 75, 80% control. So don't be surprised if you weren't able to get 100% control. Again, these are large third star in grub, in star uh, white grubs that, that are definitely more difficult to control for any insecticide on the market. Um, the one thing I guess I, I'll talk about or just kind of have this available for you to, to look at would be the use rates. On the top here, you can see Arena 50 w, WDG rate starting out in the spring with April application. If you wanted to start out now, really early, you're gonna look at something like 9.6 ounces per acre. You're gonna to have to get that rate up a little bit to ensure we have enough residual control. You can wait until May, potentially lower that rate down a little bit to 6.4. Again, the summer applications, June, July, an ideal time for arena. You can even lower that rate down to, to 4.5. And then in the fall, either a for curative applications, again, grubs are there, they're larger, takes a higher rate. We're looking at something more like 9.6, or really what I tell people, I like to see you go right to the high rate of 12.8 ounces per acre uh, to really be able to control our Japanese beetle at that the point in time. And on the bottom of this chart, we have really the same thing with the Arena uh, 0.25G, looking at, at the various rates that you'll find uh, again, but our, our overall use rate in pounds of active ingredient, if you spray it or you spread it, is really identical. And you'll find the same pattern to where you kind of have to start out the rate a little higher earlier in the year, you can kind of lower in through June and July, and then for curative control later in the year, you need to, to bounce that rate back up a little bit higher to, to ensure that you have success. But kind of following this overall pattern, you really can have good success with ARENA. Now you might ask yourself, and I've said it many times, is a higher rate late in the year, why would I want to do that? And I do tell people that, you know, this is always an option. Uh, the one thing about it, when you're treating, say, in May, June, July, uh, those preventive applications, you really need to treat everything. Um, so you're not sure where the grubs are going to be uh, at that point in time. So you're making an application over, the, say, the entire lawn. If it's a golf course situation, it would be the entire fairway, maybe. So that whole area would need to be treated versus if you wait and decide, I'm only going to treat areas if grubs do come in or if I'm starting to see some damage. And so some people have chosen to go that way. So if you do, if you do happen to be a person that just wanna make more of what I call spot treatments for curative control, again, remember you have to go at the high rate. And then also the control is don't expect 100% control. And you're certainly gonna reduce the population, but it's much more difficult in those late season applications to, to get control, but it would be a way that you don't have to treat everything uh, if, if you chose to, to go in that direction. So just some options that people could use, um, but really with you, when you look at arena and kind of summarize the whole thing, I'd say it's proven. 
It's consistent control of Japanese beetle grubs and, and other white grubs as well. But, you know, certainly, as I mentioned, chemically, Arena offers some, some real meaningful and distinct advantages over other insecticides that, that do have activity on grubs. To me, it really is kind of the standard. You can use it early. Uh, you can use it in the summer. You can use it late in the year and have very effective control. I mean, certainly the rate structure is based on really sound science. It's been tested at universities across the country for many years now. Um, I mean, it has a super wide application window from early May or maybe even April all the way into October for, for curative control. And you will see activity in other pests, um, bill bugs in particular, worms. Um, you know, we see some side effects on some other insects as well. So surface feeding insects, you can certainly see uh, uh, for a short period of time after this application um, activity as well. So a really strong insecticide for a lot of people. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I know with white grubs, a lot of people get tired of seeing their lawn torn up by raccoons or, or skunks late in the year. You get that nice preventive application out maybe in June or July, uh, a good way to stop that from hopefully ever occurring uh, late in the year. So really overall, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I certainly would be happy to uh, open it up if there happens to be any questions today. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jason. I do have a question. Yeah. How does the pH oil affect the ARF ingredient longevity? Some of that question broke up. I believe the question, though, was around the longevity of the active ingredient. Variant on the soil pH. Soil pH. Know. Yep. No, very good question. Uh, certainly, with certain. Uh, chemistries of, of insecticides that have activity on white grubs, you really have to pay attention to your soil pH. Uh, we found though with the arena through the years that really soil pH has virtually no impact. Um, that isn't something, if it's, if it's the pH of the soil, um, soil types, really it, it's been very consistent kind of across the, uh, a wide range of pHs and soil types. And uh, the one thing, or a couple of things I will mention, you know, while they're asking about what what effect it could have as far as the longevity of the active ingredient. Um, I would say that like everything else, the more rainfall that you do have, I mean, there is some solubility there that it will break down a little bit more, uh, a little faster, get moved down through the profile, but uh, overall the pH has, has no impact. One more question. Does using a wetting agent uh, enhance performance? Yeah, another really good question about wetting agent with Arena. And what we've always seen through the years that Arena, I, I really kind of like where it's at without using a wetting agent. There are some other insecticides that have activity on grubs that, you know, it will help to get through some of that that thatch layer. But with the characteristics that we see with, with clothianidin, the active ingredient in, in Arena, um, I just recommend by itself. Um, it doesn't really have that strong of affinity to, to some of the organic matter and thatch issues that you kind of find and you can actually kind of push it down through too quickly if you were to add a wetting agent. Well I don't see any other questions. I thank you for everybody attending and, and thank you Dr. Jason Fossey as well for presenting today. If there's any further questions or comments that you guys want to do go ahead and follow up your sales rep. And thank you again. All right. Well, well, thank you very much and appreciate the invitation.